Hello teacher! In this video, we are going to talk about photojournalism. And for most people, photojournalism is considered to be the most interesting and fun type of journalism. Okay, of course, we will start with the definition of photojournalism. So photojournalism is a journalism in which a story, take note, a story is presented through a photograph so unlike a news story feature story editorial story sports story so you are telling a story through a photograph so why are we using the term photograph and not pictures because pictures um, in, um, we use that term to refer to those what graphical representations such as drawings or vector art something like that so in photograph we use the term photograph to to, um, to refer to the photos about real life scenarios okay that we have taken so that's the difference again between pictures and photographs so again photojournalism it tells a story in the use of or through the use of one photograph okay so in other words photojournalism is an act wherein you form a collection you have a collection of different images wherein you deliver it your target audiences are the general public okay so now um, just to give us a little bit um, hint of the history about photojournalism. So we have here Sir Carl Zatmarie. So I don't know how to pronounce Zatmarie. Okay, Carl Zatmarie. So he was the first photojournalist that um, discovered. Okay, so he was the first photojournalist and he is a Romanian photographer. So yeah. He was born in year 1812 to 1880. Oh, he died on year 1887. So what was um, his first experience about photojournalism? So the photos he had taken was during the war between Russia and Turkey, if I'm not mistaken. So yun siya, sumabak talaga siya sa gera to, to take pictures or to take photographs of um, the war that happened. Okay, so again, this is the first, or he is the first photojournalist in the world. And now, let's meet um, uh, the first woman photojournalist in the world. And actually, an Indian photographer. Her name is Homai Vyarawala. And later, earlier lang po niya siya, ah, marag dool dool na niya sa ato ang generation ka, no? So, he, um, she, rather, she was born on year 1913 and died on year 2012. However, during um, her first experience, is that since hindi pa masyado more accepted in the society that um, there are female journalists, Kasi nga, ba, um, females are being looked down before, wala pang um, gender equality before. And so, she published her photographs under the name of her husband. So, ganyan yung story ng first woman photojournalist. But eventually, na-recognize yung kaniyang um, effort. And so, she received various awards for being the for being a photojournalist. Okay, and so again, this is um, Homai Vyarawala. And now, let's talk about the qualities of photojournalism. So, you're, when we talk about photojournalism, just like a news, our photos must be of recent events. So, we will always consider timeliness. Okay, so what's the use of taking, uh, we cannot take photos actually that, you know, oh, I mean, when we take photos, if, um, we try our best to publish it right away so that hindi po siya mapanis kumbaga. It's always um, fresh. Okay? So, um, when it comes to photojournalism as well, just like any other um, type of journalism such as news feature editorial, so we must be very objective. There should be objectivity at all times. Dapat po, hindi po tayo biased. Okay? And of course, since a photos lang po yung naka-attach, yung ginagamit natin dito to express a news towards the general public, it should be narrative enough so later on we will try to discover what do we mean by this and narrative so how can we um better tell a story through pictures okay 
Um, so now let's talk about the photojournalism standards that we need to remember. So when we take photos, uh, we must always remember that we should be accurate and comprehensive in the representations of subjects. So let's say for example, kasi nga, di ba, mayroon mga issues na, or mayroon mga tendencies na hindi yung whole picture, kumbaga, yung kinukuha. So parang nagiging bias na siya. So kasi nga, di ba, sabi dito, let we... When we take photos, we should avoid our own biasness, okay? So, you know, siya, we should be accurate uh, as far as we can um, do. Um, let's do our best to capture the whole scenario, the whole thing, kumbaga. Okay, let's say, for example, may sunog. So, if we can, yes, so, kung ang murag, i-capture na to ang whole scenario, dili lang kay katong murag na alam mga portions wherein maapektuhan na ang whole um true story okay so when we um also take photos um we should always maintain or we should always make sure that the photos well the photos will what um elicit or show respect and dignity parang ganun siya and next is um we should always maintain the integrity of the photographic images content and context um we should not give reward to sources or subjects let's say for example um you are taking of the you're taking a photo on the street you're taking a photo of a street vendor and so um it's not hey hindi naman um, ibig sabihin no, na kinuhan mo siya ng picture is babayaran mo na siya. Kasi kapag ganyan yung ano, malulugi ang journalism industry dito sa Philippines or anywhere in the world. Kasi nga, di ba, um, photojournalism is actually an art. So, kapag nakita ka as object, oh, just be um, grateful kasi naging inspiration ka ng photojournalist, parang ganon. So, ikaw naman na photojournalist, um, it's not your... It's not your responsibility to give actually a reward, especially money reward to the um to your subjects. Okay, kung sino yung pinikturan mo. And now, of course, as being always, ano, also to avoid, as being always objective, objective, and to avoid any bias, do not accept gifts at all. Kunwari, um, you are covering an event and this and this event is sponsored by this um, certain company and so, nagbinigyan ka nila ng ano, na parang under the table na mga um, the bayad or something like that. So, do not accept it. Kasi nga, di ba, it's um, actually um, labag siya sa journal, uh, itong sa journalism ethics. Okay? So, now let's proceed to selecting how do we select pictures for publication. So, what are the things that we need to consider when selecting pictures for publication? Okay, so, um, we should make sure that our pictures has the technical value. And when we say technical value, it should be clear and it should be free from smudges and it is not blurred. Okay, it should be very... um good it should have a very good quality okay again technical value talks about being clear free from smudges and not blurred okay so next is um your picture or your photograph must be must have an editorial value and when we say editorial value it should tell a story in one glance okay so it shows what is happening in the lives of the people right now or in what is happening in the world right now just like this example here so what does this talk about or what does this um pic photo tells us okay so it tells us the what the suffering of the indian people regarding the covid crisis in their country so like that so in cha parang um, meron na talaga siyang story isang kita mo pa lang okay so now let's talk about the qualities of a good photo so a good photo must have prominence action and it should be able to um, get the human interest okay so now let's have prominence when we say prominence prominent people so of course um, pictures of prominent prominent personalities attract the interest of readers so just like this um photo so if you know this person 
Do you know this person? Yes, this is Senator Bongo. So he is a prominent person right here in the in our country. And so you take um usually talaga sa media naman talaga yung kinukuna ng picture balik kumbaga malaking issue or big issue or big deal if yung isang kilalang tao may ginagawa, right? So they take every opportunity to take a photo of that certain person. So prominence. Next is action. Okay, let us always remember this quotation, action speaks louder than words. So, can you see an action here in this same photograph? Yes, because Senator Bongo is hugging a crying woman. So, meron ditong action, si hugging at saka si crying. Okay, so again, this is the second um, uh, quality of a good photo. It should have an action. Next is it should get the human interest. And how can we ensure that we can get the human interest? Of course, our photo should have or should show an emotion. Grabe yung emotion. Okay? In this photo, does it have or does it show an emotion? Yes, of course. A facial facial expression pa lang po ni nanay, nakikita na natin kung ano yung dalamhati na nararanasan niya. Okay? So actually, ito siya, I, th I believe it's, uh, I think, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, this photograph was taken um, during a, a fire accident, after, after a fire accident, and Nanay here is a victim of the fire accident. And so it does um, show um, emotion, and of course, always remember when we want to get the human interest, there should always be drama, something like that. Okay, so now let's um, learn how to uh, take photographs. So what are those tips in taking photographs? Um, we should always bear in mind or it's a rule talaga to follow kumbaga, the rule of thirds. Okay, so rule of thirds is just like dividing your... Um, yeah, setting your cell phone or your camera into um, grid. Yeah, grid. You set it into, uh, you, you set it into something na mag-show yung grid niya if you have tried that one. So, kasi, um, something Greek, Greek ba yun siya, or French, French photographers or Greek photographers, they have discovered that um, having or putting the something grids as your guide in taking photographs will eventually make your photograph better. So, yeah, rule of thirds, there are three parts, so, um, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And so, when you take a picture, say for example, just like this woman, a picture, a good um, position would be, you should always make sure that the object must be on this specific part of the grid. It is between the line of the, what, second and third column and yeah the head should be here yeah just remember this point let's show another example yeah just like this so the object here or the subject of the photograph is located in this part now let's talk about the depth of field depth of field is talking about the focus kasi Let's say, or let's say for example, very wide yung, ano, yung field mo and then meron ka lang isang subject na gusto mong i-focus. Of course, lalapitan mo talaga yung, yung subject mo to have a very good, sharp um, photo of that subject. Let's just like this, okay? Kapag garden o oh, kapag field yung gusto mong picture on, sige, picture mo yung wide field. Pero if you're going, you want to focus to the beauty of this certain flower, then lapitan mo talaga yung flower. Now, perspective. Perspective talks about how a picture or how an object um, becomes big or, yeah, when it is near on you. So, kapag ito siya, ibig sabihin ito, itong malaking taong ito, yung, di ba, camera trick ito, kapag itong taong ito is mas malaki, ibig sabihin, mas malapit siya, and itong mga maliliit na tao dito, mas nasa doon sa malayo. Okay, so another example of a perspective, so bakit parang mas maliit yung nasa dulo, eh, kung tutuusin, similar lang naman yung width ng daan, kung di ba, daan or ng road, di ba? So, this talks about perspective. Okay, so, on the next video, we are going to learn about caption writing or kaya pa ba ng time? Oh, sige, by the way, this is the technique of caption writing. Uh, caption, 
should have or should answer the five W's, why and how. So here, I will just send you a PDF for your guide. And yeah, this is an example of a photograph and its caption. Okay, so thank you so much, teacher. I hope you learned something in this um, lesson. And good luck for your test.